Video games are supposed to be engaging. This statement is the foundation of this entire analysis. Maybe you plan to make a game that seeks neither to interest or entertain its players, and while well, it's your prerogative, I would direct you away from this essay and towards a job at Electronic Arts. Returning with the assumption that the earlier statement is true, we need to ask what makes games engaging. There are many angles to approach this question from, but this analysis will focus on self-determination theory, uh, which is the idea by Edward Decci and Richard Ryan that motivation comes from the satisfaction of three basic needs. Uh, directly quoting their 2000 paper on the topic, in SDT, three psychological needs for competence, relatedness, and autonomy are considered essential. These three needs are, according to SDT, the primary intrinsic motivations, a term also described by Ditchie and Ryan, to quote, intrinsic motivation is defined as the doing of an activity for its inherent satisfactions rather than for some separable consequence. So, in order to have a player want to interact with a game, something that's quite necessary as the interactive medium of games requires player interaction to progress, we need to engage their senses of competence, relatedness, and autonomy. This analysis will look at the game Elden Ring by From Software to give a concrete example of how games can engage with players in this way. Starting with competence, in 2014, three people with difficult surnames that I will say incorrectly performed a series of experiments on competence in games. These were Abdu Hamde, uh, Sikzen Mahali, and Yahal, Yalal. The experiment tested players' engagement with games that they could easily win and games where loss was a real possibility, and found that players consistently found that challenging games were more compelling. Which makes sense to me. Competence comes from a feeling of overcoming adversity, like beating an MMA prizefighter, not a cheap win, like beating a paraplegic toddler. Elden Ring, like most From Software titles, is infamous for its difficulty, and when I played it, I lost over and over again. But when I won, I felt incredibly skilled. Elden Ring confronts you with an unforgiving and unmerciful challenge that shows its magnitude to you not by vague flattery that you know is false, but by feeling its difficulty yourself and being defeated by it. And it's incredibly good. When you eventually triumph, you are well aware of how hard fought that triumph was. Uh, to give a concrete example, the game's first major boss is Margit, the fell omen. Unless, unless the player is extremely skilled, they get immediately flattened upon first meeting him. However, they walk away, and win a few easier battles, they find new weapons and items, and possibly abuse this poor dragon here. And all the while, they grow stronger and more confident in the controls. When they come back, they're ready, and they vanquish Margaret. And since early on, they were clearly shown how great a challenge he is, they know how great their victory is, and they feel an earned sense of competence. Moving on to relatedness, Conway and Elphinstone's 2017 paper on SDT and games states that the importance of developing a connection with game characters is that relatedness with others can provide conditions that encourage the development of autonomy and competence. Simply put, having compelling characters can not only give the player a sense of relatedness, but also help other needs as well. Elden Ring has a range of characters to interact with from all walks of life. This analysis will focus primarily on this somewhat sickly woman here, Millicent. When you meet her, she's maimed and dying, but by your actions you can help her recover, and even grant her a prosthetic that allows her to fight, an ability which she uses to assist you. You go on adventures with her, and possibly become very fond of her, and when in the end she chooses to die as herself, you lose her. You feel her loss much more than that random soldier you cut down earlier, but you also feel happy because she shared her last adventure with you. Mill Millicent doesn't feel like a line of code. She feels like your friend. And she's not the only one, just the one I chose to focus on. In a world that's so hostile and scary, you treasure every friendly face, even if the face is somewhat childlike. As an aside, this does help with competence and autonomy, like Conway and Elphinstone said. Your actions gave Millicent one last adventure. That, that was you, your choice. And since the next step in each, each quest is sometimes so hidden, you feel competent finding it, or at least sneaky and clever for looking up a guide. Finally, autonomy. In a 2006 paper, Ryan Rigby and the definitely mispronounced Przybielski said, 
We expect autonomy to be enhanced by game designs that provide considerable flexibility over movement and strategies, choice over tasks and goals, and those where rewards are structured so as to provide feedback rather than to control the player's behaviour. Elden Ring doesn't only provide a difficult challenge, it provides a wide range of tactics to overcome them. Right from the very first click on New Game, you can select a class that has different stats and items, and from there it only diverges more. You can find hundreds of unique weapons and spells, each requiring different stats and fitting into different playstyles, and some you can even customise further by changing their type and special ability with Ashes of War. Here's just a few examples. Whether you stay back shooting spells, dodge around with light armor and a fast weapon, or just charge directly at the bad guy with the biggest, heaviest equipment you have, your playstyle will change the flow of every battle. Furthermore, if you become unsatisfied with the playstyle you've picked, this friendly egg mum here will let you change your stats to something new. This customizability allows a great deal of personalization, not just in terms of gameplay, but in terms of roleplay too. For example, my brother had tremendous fun playing as Grug the Caveman, only using a club and furs, seen here in this artist's rendition. To conclude, although the scope of this analysis has only allowed for a cursory examination of the ways in which Elden Ring satisfies the three basic needs of SDT, it should hopefully be clear that the game's mechanics are deliberately put together to meet those needs. The question is not if Elden Ring is engaging, the game's 92% rating on Steam and Game of the Year title answer that pretty quickly. The question is, rather, why it's engaging and how it creates that engagement. Uh, hopefully, this analysis has briefly demonstrated the usefulness of self-determination theory in answering that harder question, which is the question we have to ask if we want to make engaging games ourselves and not work at EA.